You know, after watching four of these now, I'm convinced that Jacob's superpower is running angrily away from things. Actually, he does it like ten times in this movie. The opening shot is even him, like, of course, taking off his shirt and running away. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Oh, wow. So, Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1, because that was a popular thing to do with these YA adaptations, is to split them into two parts. If you thought Mockingjay Part 1 and Deathly Hollows Part 1 was boring, wow. <laughs> this, this is definitely the worst of them that I have seen. It's fascinated by how bored I was, and granted, I'm not trying to poo-poo on wedding stuff or romantic stuff. That stuff could be interesting if the characters we were following were interesting. And of course, of course, Edward still has his Edwardisms, and he tries to talk her out of getting married to him right before the wedding, and it's just like, dude, have you seriously not gotten over this? It's just his thing, I guess. It's always been his thing. Granted, Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson have really grown as actors since the first one. They're better. They're not good. They're not fine. But they're better than what they were in the original. And I have to give them credit for building their characters somewhat with each installment. Becoming more and more tolerable as characters as the series goes, it's it's easy to pick on the two of them because, I, I mean, it's just, these were their first big roles and it's, it's just, wow, are they boring. And we spend so much of this movie on their honeymoon and no kidding, before they're about to do the uh, birds and the bees, there's this montage of Bella, like, brushing her teeth, shaving her legs, cleaning her, just like generally cleaning herself off, but yet it's kind of set up like that montage in Commando where Arnold's getting ready to fight a, uh, an army of a hundred guys. But that was out of nowhere and it, it made me laugh. So we spend 50 minutes with these two characters and their honeymoon and we're supposed to be enchanted by their love and something inevitably goes wrong. Like I said, they do the birds and the bees and the impossible happens. Bella gets pergerts. Perganonet? Yeah, perganonet. So Bella gets perganonet, which is apparently impossible, and it's, it's just like this whole dramatic thing. It's, it's just like the movie tries to go from snail's pace to exciting at a drop of a hat, and it just it doesn't work. And I can't put my finger on exactly why. Maybe it's because I like checked out about halfway through the movie. Um, so Bella and Edward are concerned because this baby is apparently growing at an accelerated rate. And they, they go home and, and consult the Collins. And of course, Edward's dad is a doctor and he doesn't really know how to help Bella. His his solution is that he's going to turn, her, is that they should turn her at the very last minute because essentially this baby, who is I guess a hybrid between human and, and a vampire, is literally sucking the life out of her, and, and that it's slowly killing her. Couldn't her body handle this as a vampire? They don't really explore that. So I'm thinking this the whole time. I'm just like these people are so dumb. I don't know if the book goes into that, but the movie doesn't make it clear if if it would save Bella all the pain if they just turned her right when she got pregnant. I get that the baby's sort of feeding on her, but there are previous installments where vampires feed on each other, so why wouldn't that work? I don't know. It's just a whole convoluted thing. That's not even the craziest thing that happens in this movie. So the baby bump gets bigger and bigger and bigger and Bella just starts wasting away and of course the werewolves get super pissed about this, like overly so, where it's just like, it feels like the writers had to have something exciting happen, 
because they were like, oh, oh shit, this this movie's been a snore fest for the first 80 minutes. And, and again, it suffers from part one syndrome, and they try to sh throw all this excitement in the very last minute, but it's kind of too little too late. And of course, Jacob comes in and does his whole flip-flop thing where like one moment he's supportive and one moment he's pissed that she's having the baby and that she's with Edward at all. And he eventually does decide to stay with her to protect her from the werewolf tribe. And spoiler alert, the baby does end up getting born and Bella does end up surviving. And when Jacob sees this baby, he has an epiphany. And it blew my mind. I did not, I did not see this coming but I literally shouted, ew, when this moment happened. One of the Collins is holding the baby and you think that, oh, Jacob's gonna try to kill this thing. He realizes that this entire time that he's been infatuated with Bella, it was never actually Bella that he was infatuated with. It was her unborn child. So, the whole scene in the first one where Edward's like, I love to watch you sleep, that's no longer the creepiest moment in this series. So there's like this whole flash where Jacob sees in his mind his future with Bella and Edward's kid. I don't know how to process this at all. Like my my brain is just it's just frozen. It's so ridiculous and creepy. And people are gonna say, well, I mean, is it really any creepier than an 18-year-old dating a vampire that is, what is Edward, 70 years old or something like that? Is it really creepier than that? Yes, it is. <laughs> it, 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 it is. And uh, I have no idea how they're going to address this in part two. I assume it's going to be like any of the other romances in this series where it's just awkward. And of course, they do turn Bella at the very last minute, and that's kind of where the story ends for part one. And the events of part two are hinted at in a mid credit scene. And that whole sequence is just like, since when was that a thing? I, I guess these people are bad guys now, but um, we got to set up something exciting for part two, right? So Twilight, Breaking Dawn, I, I hesitate how to rank it among the others. Eclipse is far better. Um, New Moon is the most maddening from a character standpoint. The first is the worst acted and certainly the worst looking. And Breaking Dawn Part 1 is hands down the most boring entry. At least with the others I could have some satisfaction of getting some sort of emotional response whether it was positive or negative but for about 70% of this movie, I I was just bored, and that being said, I am excited, I guess, to wrap up this series and to get onto the graphic novels. Watching these has been interesting, educational, and I feel like I will be a changed man after I uh, finish part two. Whether that is a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Thanks again to my good friend Christine DeFries for offering me this challenge. Make sure you check out her channel, all the links are listed below. My new book, The Legacy, is available on ebook and paperbacks. Thanks as always for watching. Bye.